Okay, so these are a series of questions on like the national grid um, and kind of getting your electricity to your home. So an advantage of the national grid is keeps electricity available if some power stations fail because it's a big grid that you can you can get um, energy off other ones. Step up transformers are used to reduce energy losses in the cables. Step down transformers are used to make the voltage smaller. Um, it's a bit of a mess by here. But the power stays constant. We need the power to stay constant, but the voltage needs to be smaller so you don't get electrocuted. Okay. Um, explain why the cooling tubes are painted black. Black is a good emitter of heat, so it cools it down quickly. Okay. Um, if the pumps in the tubes break down, break down convection, then happens. Explain where the hottest oil will be found. Okay. So all we're looking for here is that buzzword convection. Okay. So they will be found at the top. Because when we learn about convection, we do that hot things rise because they're less dense. Okay. And um, cool things are more dense, so they fall. So where would you find the hot oil? You'd find it at the top because it's less dense than the cool oil, so it would rise above. That Look at the buzzwords. You didn't really need to know anything else about what was going on there, except for the fact that we know what convection is. and We know that something that's really hot would be at the top. Um, this then is looking at different experiments. The first experiment then, it says, explain how the coloured water moves in the way as described above. When coloured water is heated, the particles spread out and become less dense. Okay, a really important buzzword here, less dense. Okay, so they rise. As they move away from the heat source, they cool and they become less dense and sink back down. Okay, so the ones up here are going to be warm and less dense. The ones by here then are going to be colder and they're going to be more dense and they fall. And this creates like a current then which goes on and on and on, okay, until there's none of the potassium permanganate left um, or the heat source runs out, okay. Another way we can test, but this is now testing for conduction, okay, which is something that happens mainly in solids. And the good conductors are things like metals and then bad conductors are things like plastic. Okay, they aren't very good conductors. You've seen this experiment in class. So you've got four rods, all the same length. Okay, all the same mass. Okay, all with the same mass of... Um, of Vaseline on them. Okay, all the same distance from the heater. Okay, um, and then they've got the same mass, same type, same mass of drawing pin. Okay, so there is a lot of control um, variables to pick on here. Okay, in case that comes up. All you do then is heat the source at the exact same time, heat all the metals, okay? Metals conduct heat, so heat will transmit, and then you're timing how long it takes for the drawing pin to fall off. Um, explain the process. Um, when the end of the copper is heated, particles gain energy and be begin to move faster. The more particles move faster, they collide with other particles. This then transfers heat energy, okay? So you've got your rod here. Imagine it's got loads of particles all packed in, all packed in. I'm not going to draw them all, okay? What happens is if you've got heat here, remember, imagine you've got your Vaseline here at the end with your paper clip on it, okay? You then heat up this one by here because that's your Bunsen burner. What happens then is that one gains energy and starts to collide and bump into them. So then the heat transmits all the way along the metal rod and then eventually it will heat up the Vaseline and it will fall off, okay? Um... The one that's the best conductor, will, will, that will happen quickest. So we're saying that copper, that would happen quickest. Um, obviously, iron isn't as good conductor, okay? So it won't conduct the heat as quickly. Um, nice little diagram here, and labelling them, okay? This experiment set up here is convection, okay? Liquids, so convection happens in liquids and gases. Okay, and this experiment set up here is conduction. And I've just talked about that. It's just a little bit of a different one. It's still the same kind of thing with the drawing pin and the wax, but instead the heat goes in the middle. Um, 
you need to work out the mean. To work out the mean, you would do all three added together. So 73 plus 78 plus 74, and then divide it by 3, and that will give you 75. Circle the anomalous result. Be careful of these guys because there's two marks here that people might have forgotten. Anomalous results are results that don't quite fit the trend. If you look, you've got 35, 37. This one is quite far out. So anomalous results are things that don't fit the trend. Okay. Um, use the results to arrange the metals, okay? So you're looking for the one, okay? You're looking for the one which has the lowest mean, okay? So if you go back to your table of results, copper had the lowest mean, so that would be the best at transferring heat and you could work your way down based on the means, okay? So look at the means again. A nice question, just extracting information from the table, okay? Um, explain why this experiment shows the plates have been heated by radiation and not convection or conduction, okay? Um, black will drop first, okay, so you've got two different um, metal weights held on by wax, okay, one's silver, one's black, okay, black will drop first as it absorbs better implying radiation, heat between the, air between the heater is insulator, so it's not convection. If it was convection, the air would move up. Heat is transferred through solids by conduction. Heat is transferred through a liquid by convection. Heat is transferred through space. Okay, so space is to do with it being like the actual space being a vacuum. So there's no particles up there. Um, heat transfers occur when there is a temperature difference. Okay, um, this is going to be a radiation experiment. The reason I know it's a radiation experiment is because you've got silver and black foil. Okay, um, silver reflects heat black absorbs the heat okay. we've got a series of results here um, what happens when the thermometer is wrapped in black paper and then on the graph it says the results for the silver foil are shown what you then need to do okay for extra marks is to um, plot your black foil using the table put above and in and look at the data Calculate the temperature difference at 14, okay? So you need to read off your table at 14, okay? This is the black one. That's what the black is at. This is what the silver's at. Take them away from each other and you've got 13. So there's quite a lot of marks to be collected there for plotting a graph and just doing a difference, okay? Um, the students used data um, collected during the investigation and decided the best of colour for the solar water heated shown below is black, Okay, explain why black is better. Black is an absorber of heat. Okay, so it will show how much sun's heat reaches there. So it will show how much sun has been given out. Okay, you can see the same kind of question comes up as before. As soon as you see black and silver, you know it's a radiation experiment. Okay, this one will fall off quicker because the black will absorb the heat and cause the wax to melt and it fall off. Okay. Um, the air is an insulator, so it cannot travel by conduction. Okay, there is no solid. There's a gap here where there's no solid, so it can't be conduction. So that needs solids. That needs solids. Okay. Um, the heat would move up upwards if it's convection. Okay, because hot air would rise and it would kind of end up out here. Okay, so that's why it has to be radiation. Again, data shown, collected. Okay, a bit more tricky data because it's got it's got decimal places. OK, um, it's then asking you to comment on the data, explain why there's a difference in temperature. OK, um, the heat is transferred by radiation. Black is a better absorber of radiation as silver and shiny surfaces reflect it. So um, that's why there's a difference in the temperature increases. OK, um, this kind of question is quite complicated. Um, so I'm going to leave it out. It's a, you will not be asked that. OK. Questions then looking at um, how to insulate your home to make sure that you limit the amount of convection, conduction and radiation that is lost. OK, the homeowner has 3,200 available to spend on improving the insulation. He has one, two, three, four different types of insulation that he could use. OK, it's a semi-detached, poorly insulated home. OK, complete the spaces in the two columns above. So the so the first thing we want to be thinking about when we've got this is that payback equals cost over saving, okay? 
So it cost 800 to put in. We save 200 a year, so we divide them, and that gives us 4, which fills in that one. The other one, then, we kind of have to rearrange the equation. So we pay back, we know is 60. We know the cost is 1,200. We do not know what the savings would be. Okay, so if I just bring that up here, so it's time, so I do 60 times by x equals 1,200x, then would equal 1,200 divided by 60, which would give you 20. So every year you save 20 pounds and it would take you 60 years to pay back the total cost. The next question then goes on to, it's like a six mark question, so I'm just going to briefly talk about it on this slide, um, which asks you to think about which one you would recommend that the um, homeowner that the homeowner spends his 1,000, um, that he spends his 3,200 pounds on, okay? So I would start by mentioning the loft, okay? And the fact by um, putting the fiberglass on the loft, look at the, the energy difference. So you are um, saving loads of energy there to start with. So originally 4,200 would have been lost in heat. Now only 1,500 is. So there's a large decrease in heat energy loss. Okay, um, and it only costs eight hundred pounds, and you could pay it back. Is low, okay? So that would be where I'd spend my first eight hundred pounds. Okay. The next one, then, I would definitely think of employing again. Okay, would be the cavity wall. So that that would be where I'd spend my money next. The reason for this again is there's a large decrease in heat energy loss um, this one does take a little bit longer okay so payback time is 10 years but it is quite you're only you are for the price of it you are earning your money back okay so it's still got quite a low payback time okay if I was, because that then cost 1,200. So if I was to add that up, I've now spent 2,000 pounds. He has got 3,200 pounds to spend. So he has got 1,200 pounds left. Okay, which means that I cannot afford the windows. So I can't afford them. I've made the decision I won't be having them just because of the smaller um, heat energy loss. So I would then have the, P the PVC windows. Okay, just because that's the extra money I've got and I'd have to... Um, PVC doors, sorry, and I'd have to get rid of the windows. So that would all go. Okay. On this six mark here, okay, using the table. So just bullet point it, don't worry about it. Um, I've obviously written it quite messy on the previous page, but that's the kind of information they would be expecting there. The big thing here would be to make sure that you comment on that's the cost, okay, so you can't have everything because that would go over the cost, 